The raid into Botswana that Craig Williamson was involved in was, sadly, not the only attack by the South Africans in that country. There were two others, and the human toll of the three operations were heavy. Good evening. Units of the South African Defence Force carried out raids on ANC targets in Gaborone, Botswana today. General Fulhun told the news conference that the death toll included three trained women terrorists, while two unidentified persons who fired on the South Africans from a vehicle might also have been killed. One woman and two children were injured in the crossfire. At four o'clock that very afternoon after they were killed, I opened the TV. They used to have news at four o'clock. At six o'clock I did the same, at seven the same, and all the time they were showing the same pictures in Botswana, his bed, the, 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 the one bedroom full of blood where they were lying and the, the TV shattered and so on. And things just thrown all over. And the, the cars damaged in the yard. And then I phoned Botswana and uh, there was nobody to reply the phone at his house. And then I just told the father that I think they're gone. Most white South Africans were very proud of these actions of the Defence Force. But for Hilda Parthley, it was her worst nightmare come true. Her son George lived in Gaborone. George's brother Levy watched his family being killed by SADF Special Forces Commandos. Well, Levy watched from under the bed. He was hiding when he saw them killing the brother and the wife. And uh, he heard them... When one said, he said, do it, and the other said, more do it. Levy says, from the time they got out of the kumbi, it was that George, your master dear and your master dare, magdi dear op, magdi what what dear op, and so on. So they knew where they went, where they were, who they were going to kill. They, they knew it was George. George Parsley had worked as a courier for the ANC underground in Botswana. But the SADF raid was by no means as surgical as the SADF claimed. In his recent court case, the former commander of Flakplas, Eugene de Kock, testified that the commandos involved in the raid were not able to bring back any evidence that those they killed had in fact been ANC members. They found no weapons or ANC literature in the houses they attacked. The sophisticated night sight for a RPG-7 rocket launcher that they displayed to the media had in fact been Eugene de Kock's farewell gift from Kufut, and the two hand grenades they produced were also on loan from the Flakplas arsenal. Well, it was almost never a training area. Uh, uh, most of the trainings were, uh, training was done in Angola and, um, and in Zambia. But then it was a conduit, I would say, where people, when they pass coming from Zambia, from Zambia, they pass through Botswana, but without the Botswana government's knowledge, we had to do these things. We had no other alternative because the war was not waged in Zambia, it was not waged in, in Botswana, but it was waged inside the country. And so we had to find ways of infiltrating these people, our trained cadres from Botswana, uh, into uh, our trained cadres from Zambia into Botswana, and from Botswana, they would hide them in different houses in Botswana and send them into the country. Botswana was a crucial country for the ANC's armed struggle, but living there was extremely dangerous. In 1986, the SADF again attacked Gaborone. In the early hours of this morning, strike aircraft and helicopters of the South African Air Force, as well as a ground unit, attacked ANC facilities in Harare, Lusaka and Gaborone. We had uh, two tekens in uh, Zimbabwe and in Ian and uh, Gaborone. And behind this clinical news report lies yet another intricate web of deception and lies. The 1986 raid into Botswana had been triggered by the discovery of this huge arms cache near Krugersdorp. But it was not an ANC arms cache, as the generals claimed. Eugene de Kock says his Flakplas unit had in fact been asked to supply the weapons that were then planted. It was done in order for the SADF to justify their second attack on Gaborone. He says politicians like Puk Boerta and President P.W. Boerta knew about this elaborate plan. 
During the raid, no weapons or literature was found in the houses that were attacked. In fact, a briefcase belonging to one of those killed in the raid and brought back to South Africa was found to belong to a deputy director of water affairs in the Botswana government. Eugene de Kock was then asked to provide three Makarov pistols, which were then planted in the briefcase before it was displayed to the media. Well, we reacted to shock, but that's what we always expected, because we knew that we were dealing with a very brutal regime. And so all, all the time our nerves would be up, we knew very well that anything would happen to us. And so if something has happened to our comrade, we knew that, of course, it was coming, but when? We kept on asking, when is it going to happen to me? And so that's how we used to live. In 1988, the war came back to Gaborone. The SADF raid left people dead once again. The four people killed in the raid were buried today. This year, the South African Defence Force made a submission to the Truth Commission acknowledging the Botswana raids. The following external operations were carried out against the ANC and PAC bases and facilities. Mozambique, 30 January 1981 an attack on the ANC headquarters in the Matola area, Mozambique. Lesotho, 9th of December, 1982, well, as Christians, we've got Mozambique. to accept what has come our way, more so that we cannot repair the damage. The only thing is for us to accept it and pray that such a thing never happens again. That's all.